What's that? Sounds like a puma. Don't know what else it could be. Think he's heading for the herd? That's what I aim to find out. Now, you stay put, you hear? Mr. Favor ain't gonna like us being late.
Archie! Over here. Soon now, Shonaka. Soon. Sprain. How's it for you? <laughs> Less said about his head, the better. Cat hunting with a shotgun. Oh, yeah. Jimbo, you take over on Ramrod until Roddy gets back. On Barton, you can go and scout. Yeah, about time I had some easy living. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that hunter? Down at the creek. Said he didn't want any doctoring. He said he didn't want you messing with him, is what he said. That shows a lot of horse sense. Horse sense? Since when did you ever see a hunter with any horse sense? If they had any horse sense, there wouldn't be a hunter. Just goes to show you what... You, uh, did say your name was Carlock, didn't you? That's right. Well, we're much obliged to you. Obliged for what? <laughs> him. He isn't worth much, but we kind of got used to him. You don't owe me a thing. I sure am grateful you happened along up there, Mr. Carlock. I didn't just happen along. I was tracking that animal. Tell me, Carlock, uh, just what kind of a puma was that, anyway? It didn't sound like anything I'd ever heard before. Ain't no kind of a puma at all. It's a lion. African lion. Say, come to think of it, I saw a giraffe last week. I'd have mentioned it, but didn't think it was important. <laughs> Is that your way of saying I'm a liar? Are you? If you lived around here, you'd know better. That's what I said it was. African lion. Oh, come. Well, he was taking it by train up to Elitch Gardens up in Denver. Piled up up above Nine Mile Grade, and got loose. Loose ever since. Four or five years. Paiutes call it Shonaka. Say that any man who goes after it's dead before he starts. You were lucky, boy. Real lucky. A lion. Well, that's all we needed. There it is. Just letting you know it's out there. At least now he sounds quite a ways off. So I double up the night guard? I just did. I was lucky, too. Was it uh, that same cat? Shonaka. Put its mark on me. I put mine on it four years ago. Four years? And the people that owned the cat, they wanted it back alive. Seeing it was tame trained, they put up a bounty. I did my tracking, I sprung my trap. Guess I got it by the foot. Went crazy, chewed itself loose, turned killer. Man killer. Since then, it's been kind of personal between us. You mean tell me you've been hunting that same lion for four years? Not steady, just off and on. I work around here and there most every place. These uh, scars, they never did rightly heal. Something about the nerves. Every once in a while, I get to acting up. The itch. And I start thinking about that cat out there. Back I come. How's that arm feel? I'll live. You, uh, think you'd be able to work? Why? Well, Short-handed. A ramrod has half the men over at Talbot picking up another 500 head. I ain't no drawer. What I had in mind was a hunter. All right. But I hunt my way. How's that? 
I don't need a yearling out of your herd. When? Hmm. Most any time now. Quince, get him out of yearling. And I want that herd kept tight. Real tight, here. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I uh, can spare you a couple of men, being this is night. I hunt alone. Wouldn't it be better to catch him in a crossfire? No crossfire is going to catch Shonaka. Take more than that. A lot more than that. Telling, that's all. Hey, what? This bumble-footed knucklehead forgot to give you the mail. With being hurt and all, Mr. Payer, it, it plain slipped my mind. Well, now, that's all right, Mushy. We're plumb even up. I forgot to ask you for it, didn't I? That's right. Anybody interested in mail? Mail! Mail! All right, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Scarlet! Here, pass it back to Joe. Barton, Wishbone. Me. Me again. Calloway. Calloway again. And Mushy. Mushy! You call me Mr. Favor? I got a letter for you. For me? We got another Harkness Mushgrove the Third in the outfit. Here. Well, come on, take it. You want it? If you don't want it, Mushy. I'll take it. Mister Toothless, it's mine. Where are your manners, Mush? Don't you know you're supposed to say please? <laughs> Mister Toothless, give me my letter. Hey, oh, oh, oh. get it, guy! Oh, Quick, that! Oh, hey, Toothless, over here! Hey, hey, guys. Guys. Much obliged, Mr. Carlock. doing, Mushy, thinking? That's right, Mr. Wishbone. You know what I've been thinking? Yep. You do? I sure do. You've been sitting there thinking about quitting the drive. How'd you know? Because it happens every time they poke fun at you. Follows like the grass after rain. This time I've been thinking serious about quitting the drive. I'm tired of having people play jokes on me. And I'm tired of being called a, a fumble-headed knucklefoot. That's a fumble-footed knucklehead, you idiot. Anyway, you're not, really. Then how come everybody's always making sport of me? That's because they like you. And you'd know that if you wasn't such a fumble-footed knucklehead. But you, but you just said... Now, no buts about it, Mushy. You're not quitting the drive, and that's that. Well, it's downright silly. Where would you quit to? What would you do? Well, lots of things. Name one. I could be a hunter. I could get me a dog and go up in the hills, maybe. And hunt and get along just fine. Oh, hunter, haven't you got that knocked out of your head yet? Anyway, how could you be a hunter? Look at all of that gear. Why, there, a horse 
extra saddlebags, an extra rifle. You couldn't even get started on less than $100 cash. Well, maybe I got $100. Since when? Since my letter, that's when. Now, Mushy, you know very well that's a plain, outright, bare-faced... All right. All right. We'll just find out about that. Mr. Carlock, you saw that letter Mushy got, didn't you? What about it? Did you see anything of a hundred dollars in it? Could have been a hundred dollars. Could have been more. You sure? I'm always sure. You see there? All right, go ahead and be a hunter. Shoot your foot off for all I care. He certainly put his spoke in his wheel. Thank you. <laughs> I'd be mighty proud to help you here, Mr. Carla. I got that yearling cut out for you, Carlick. He's down by the Ramuda line. What do you say they call that thing? Shonaka. Paiute for death dancer. Death dancer? Say it dances over a kill like a Paiute shaman at a burial. Say it's not even a cat. Say it's an evil spirit. Evil spirit? There's no such thing, is there? Wouldn't know about that. But I'll tell you this. You hunt that cat long enough and you start to wonder. Back and find out what's out in the car lock. I'll hold down your bike for you. Will do. I'd like to help you. Why? I don't know. Pay you back, maybe. You done something for me about that letter. Well, not for you. Let's hold you up, Carlock. That herd's getting hard to hold. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get down there right away. Down? Down where? Well, I figured to set up about a quarter mile south of the herd. Yeah, but that cat's upwind to the north. Yeah, I know. Look here. There's Bass. There's your herd, right there. Cats up here, upwind. Letting them know it's up there. Gonna split out a couple of strays. He's gonna go down around here, make his kill from downwind. That's where I'm gonna be. My little friend there. First thing that cat sees. That's fine, but uh, just how do you know that cat's gonna do that? Because that's what I'd do.
If it wouldn't be too much trouble, almighty hunter, would you get at those dishes? No, sir. Well, 28 more ahead, slice of strays. Find any dead beef? Not one. Funny, too, the way they were scattered. I wonder why that cat didn't hit him. Yeah, funny. Well, you can ask him next time you come across him. Right now, you better hurry up and eat. I'm pulling out in 10 minutes. Sleep at all? Uh -huh. Why don't you crawl in supply wagon? Maybe you can pick up a couple hours anyhow. Yeah, I won't sleep now. I'm too close. I'm feeling it's almost finished. One way or the other. Suit yourself. I thought I could fix that sleeve for you. Hmm. All right. Doesn't that belong to somebody? Oh, it's a spare one. Anybody who needs it. I can make that sleeve as good as new for you. Hmm. What is it? What's what, Mr. Carla? What do you want? Nothing, honest. There's just one little thing. I'd sure admire going hunting with you. Why? Well, to show some of these folks around here. I think I'm a big joke anyhow. I hunt alone. Well, 
Well, you better get started, Barton. After last night, we're going to need a downhill train. Look, Billy. Keep your eyes open out there now, you hear? Just like they was propped open with toothpicks, Jim. some shovels. Yes. Looks like you got down to make coffee. you think, don't it? Think what? That he was wearing his coat. It's got his scent on it. How's that cat know it wasn't Carlick he killed? You think he was stalking me? Well, don't you? I don't know. I claim Billy got killed because he had your coat on. And Billy got killed because he got careless. Listen, boss. That's enough foolishness. Come on, we better give Mush a hand. I think maybe Jim's right. About this? I don't know. Get rid of it. I think you're right, Joe. Second time it's happened. Yeah, I know that. Then the stampede. 
Well, we all feel the same way about it. Let's go have a little talk. Mr. Saver, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure. What's on your mind? Garlic, we want you to get rid of it. Uh -huh. Is that right? What's your reason? Well, it boils down to this. We ain't gonna get rid of that cat until we get rid of him. We figure that cat's after him. I'll go along with you on that. He will? Yeah, sure. He's after Carla, you, me, and anything else that breathes. He's a rogue, a killer. The only thing that's killed is Billy. And I still claim it's on account of Carla's coat. Now, Jim, we had our little talk about that. So if that's all you got to say. No, sir. There's more. All right, go ahead. What about that stampede? Not one dead steer, but that cat was right in the thick of it. You know who almost did get killed, though? You bet it was Carlock there. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Are you trying to tell me that that cat started that stampede to kill Carla? I ain't trying to tell you nothing, boss, but it's mighty funny that every time that cat makes a move, it moves right towards old Carlock. Stands to reason. They got it in for each other. Well, let me tell you what I think about cats. I think they're just animals. I don't think they're like people sitting around, figuring out feuds or plotting revenge. Maybe that's right, and maybe it isn't. But look what's happened. Billy's dead, Mushy got hurt. We've had a stampede. Now, what else has to happen before them two settle it once and for all? Get rid of him, boss. You know, I did sign him on for a reason. I'm short-handed. I need a hunter. We'll hunt. We'll do anything. We'll pull double shifts. Double shifts on your own? You all agreed to that? Right. 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 Well, look, you didn't decide on wages last night. You don't have to pay me to hunt that cat. Oh, I heard you. I'll pay you. Dollar a day, just like the drovers. If that sounds fair to you, that'll be the end of it. What do you mean? Well, uh, draw on your time. Won't be needing you anymore. Kind of them? Oh, I do my own hiring and firing, but uh, if they're willing to stand extra watches on their own time, I've got to go along with that. Yeah. How you can pay me in the morning? Oh, he won't be here in the morning. You want me to clear camp tonight? That's it. Look, it's like I told you. This thing's coming to a head tonight. That, that cat's moving in a pattern around this herd. I think I got it figured out. I don't very often feel called on to say please to a man, but I'm saying it now. Please, I, I need one more night with that herd. Just, just till sun up. Carl, I think nothing personal. It's... Just you're not a man to fit in with the driver. Who says there's a better way to say it? Well, don't you think I know what I've become? A man don't hunt one cat for four years without something happening to him. Used to be a soldier, troop sergeant. You like hunting better? What I like don't come into it. I was stationed down at Sundance. Met a girl, half breeding. Art Paiute. Willow was her name. Suited her just fine. I don't know how it is where you come from, but down there, well, being married to a half-breed, they don't take too kindly to it. I should have stuck it out, I guess. I know I should have now. Shames me that it didn't. But I let them run me out of the army. Willow and I, we uh, come up here and did a little farming, raised some stock. We make it out just fine. And then that cat busted loose, and I went after the bounty. Set my traps like I told you. I'd come up to see, and it got me pretty bad. I managed to make it home. But 
chap got there first. I found a little. He's by the well. And that's why I hunt it. The death dancer. You got to the center. That's all the time I'll need. Sit down. What's wrong, Mr. Perla? You said something about wanting to hunt. Yes, sir. Want to hunt with me? You mean permanent? Why not? You're not joking me, are you? I'm not much of a joker. Me, a real hunter? Wait till I tell him. When would you think of starting? Right away. Right. Take the cat. Maybe you and I could do it together. Just made a mistake. Mistake? Yeah, I didn't think you'd scare that easy. Any time, Mr. Carlock. The least ways I don't think so. What then? I don't know. I've been thinking about quitting a herd. I'm right down to it, I don't know. Well, it's your choice. Tub of soap or live like a man. I sure do appreciate the opera, Mr. Carlock. I have to think about it a while. Maybe talk it over to somebody. I'll be going out at moonrise. You got to then to make up your mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can't you see I'm busy? It's important, Mr. Whisper. All right, deal me out. All right, what's so important? Well, I wanted to talk to you. Well, talk. It's about leaving the herd, Mr. Wishbone. So you finally made up your mind. Well, I ain't flat out decided yet. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, I see. You haven't decided yet. So you want me to tell you how much everybody likes you and what a good job you're doing, and then end up by getting down on my knees to you. I ain't done at all, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Carlock asked me to be his partner. Oh, mushy. You think I was born last Tuesday? No. <laughs> well, you got your last rise out of me. Mr. Wishbone. Uh... I wouldn't be leaving a herd if, if you needed me. Oh, you wouldn't want to leave if we needed you? No, sir. Well, then you just go right ahead and don't worry about us. We'll get along somehow. You mean you don't care if I go? I don't care if you sprout pin feathers and fly away. Now, you just hollered wolf once too often. You want to quit? You quit. All right, then I will. What was that all about? No, oh, nothing. Mushy just wanting a little sympathy. Well, it's time he learned a lesson. Whose deal is it? It's mine. Well, well I'm ready any time you are. Here. I may need this. So, Henry. Where the, where the fellas see me go through camp with this? Uh, I think we better go out this way. After we get that cat and come back, then we'll show him. Sure, Mr. Carlock.
There's a place. Here, put that on. Yes, sir. Mr. Carlock, this is your coat. Huh? What about it? I heard Mr. Quinn say something about this coat. He said that cat went after it. You still don't know when they're joking you, do you, Marshal? Not too bright, Mr. Carlock. I'll get better, you see. Oh, uh, keep your sights on that water hole. Yes, sir. Where you be? Don't worry. I'll be nearby. Well, much obliged, Mr. Carlock. How's it hurt, boss? Like it always is. How's the coffee? Like it always is. Oh, that's too bad. Uh -huh. Wishbone. What? Let's have some coffee, huh? Do you want to have it bean by bean, or you want to wait till I find the coffee grinder? Can you tell me how one loses a coffee grinder? I didn't lose a coffee grinder. I just can't find where that knucklehead mushy put it. I got an idea. Why don't you ask him? Because I wouldn't give him the satisfaction, that's why. I think he went off someplace, boss. You think he went off someplace? Off someplace where? I don't know. Him and that hunter, they took off south. I thought you knew about it. You thought I knew about it. Wishbone! This is I hear about Mushy going off with a hunter. He said he was going to, but I didn't believe him. You don't think... I don't think anything anymore. Well, neither do I, boss, but uh, I'd sure give a lot to know who's wearing Carlock's range coat right now. Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. Yeah, where is he, then? You heard it himself. He said he hunts alone. Going south, huh? All right, let's go. Where you belong. I can't cover you.
Well, anyways, at least you're even up now. For what? For your wife. Cat's dead. You think Shonaka killed my wife? It was me. I killed her when I let him rent me out of the army. Brought her out here to live. That cat, I just took my shame out on it. It was me. It was all. what he was hunting for anyway. Maybe. I hope so. Because it wasn't the cat he was after. Mushy, I told you to clear that tailgate. Yes, sir. Now! <laughs> well, why don't you get up? I guess because I'm a fumble-headed knucklefoot. No, you're not, but you'll sure do till one comes along. I appreciate that, Mr. Wishbone. I think. Just clear it up. And don't hide the coffee grinder. Forgotten what a town looked like. I'd like to know what it is about this and brought your memory. One good spit would land out in the country. Well, are you coming? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. What's the matter with you today, boy? You're moping around like a calf of the colic. I got a feeling in my stomach something's gonna happen. I probably already has. You must have had some of Wishbone's flannel cakes this morning. Smart Alec. Bites the hand that feeds him. You want me to come in the store and start carrying out the supplies? No, not with a colicky stomach. You just stay right here till I get some turpentine and sugar down you. Morning. Oh, good morning.
Marshy! Yes, sir? You mind your manners. Two brother, and you got a deal. Well, I'll hold it for you. Well, might be safer the other way around. Oh, you just go ahead and take a poke at it, Reverend. <laughs> I don't know much about your judgment, but I sure like your faith. Yeah, it's fine. Well, I don't know about your faith, but I sure like your aim. You building a new church, Reverend? Even the mighty oak must start from the humble beginnings of an acorn. Well, I ain't got much, but I'd be glad to. Oh, no, 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 thank you, son. You've done enough already. Well, I wasn't intending on spending on anything special. Then just let it jingle. Ain't nothing like a little spending silver in a man's pocket to make the day stand up and shine. Well, if you say so, Reverend. Yeah, I say so. <laughs> It was only a dollar, Lord. And besides, he looked like he needed it worse than we do. Cowboy. Oh, no, thank you. It's a friendly game. Sure, you in or out? We'll even let you start the deal. Well, Mr. Wishbone, he told me to be careful sitting across from a man if I gambled. But since you're a woman. <sighs> nice that you noticed. Sit down. <laughs> thank you. Dealer's choice, five and ten limit. How many chips? Well, I'll take that many. I'd like to play seven card stud, deuce is wild. What kind of poker is that? Well, first you deal two down. Nah, I know how to play. Lorelei, you're gonna put up with this. Trailblazer has a policy of dealer's choice, and uh, that's what it is. You don't mind if we skip the introductions and uh, get right to the game, do you, Hanson? Oh, no, ma'am. There'll be plenty of time for that later, after we played a few hands. Yes, it'll take about that many. Deal. Oh, yes, ma'am. One. 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 Two. 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 Crew's getting mighty hungry. Yeah, well, uh, there's jerky in the chuck wagon. Well, not anymore. We ate all that about two hours ago. Yeah, with Whisper not back, what are we gonna do about cooking? I'll tell you what, Scarlet. Let's see how clean your hands are, huh? Well, not me, boss. I got too many enemies already. Let 
call me. Turn me loose now. Mr. Favor's gonna be mad. You oh. better stop it. <laughs> stop what, honey? We're just being neighborly. Neighborly? <laughs> Why, honey, you must be ticklish. <laughs> well, let go of me now. Turn me loose. Boss, uh, you're not gonna believe this. No, but you go ahead and try me anyways. Well, you see, it happened like this. Uh, we were in town and... Mm -hmm. uh, the wish, why don't you tell him? Uh, me tell him? You're the ramrod. That remains to be seen. Well? Oh, oh, uh, we got a visitor. Lorelei Mears, she's the owner of the trailblazer in town. I'll get her for you. See, boss, it was like this. Mushy wasn't feeling too good, so we left him in the wagon to just kind of relax while we went in to buy the supplies. Please continue. Well, then when we come out, we couldn't find him, and when we finally did, there he was with all of these women. And oh. uh, in the line, Lorelei. Well, maybe for you, cowboy, but not for me. Poker! Jumping G hot. It's a gospel truth. The darn fool's gonna run himself fifteen hundred dollars playing seven card stud deuces wild. Uh, fifteen hundred and forty-seven dollars to be exact, Mr. Favor. Got any complaints to make, lady? <laughs> well, you ever heard of a loser who didn't? Your boys cut me off a little too soon, and all I want is a fair sporting chance to win it back. You can have all the chances you want, except not here and not now. I hope that's sporting enough. Uh, then suppose I make you a proposition. Why don't you and your boys come back to town and I'll set up the evening? Drinks on the house and uh, all the fun you want. How'd that sound, boys? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's what what want. Anybody right. wants to take her up on her offer can pick up his draw on the way out. Well, wait a minute, Trail Boss. That's boy. just what I'm gonna do. Wait one minute and I'm gonna start clearing camp and I'm starting with you, lady. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll go in peace if the big winner will keep me company. My Jane. Yes, sir, Mr. Faber. She's got an offer to quit the cattle business. You want to take it? No, sir, I couldn't leave the dry. All righty. Well, let's get moving. Wishbone needs wood for supper. Yes, sir, right away. What's that money? You want to start a stampede? Oh, you will show the lady to her horse and the road back to town. Come on, girls. Let's get out of this cow camp. Oh, and the rest of you better get moving before you get stomped on by the herd. You know, Lorelei, Mr. Favor isn't all bad. He just kind of acts tough. In fact, uh, deep inside, he's got a soft spot as big as all outdoors. <laughs> then that makes you two of a kind, doesn't it? Oh, how's that? Well, you have a soft spot, too. Right between your ears. Get it. <laughs> oh, I suppose you think you're real happy now. Oh, yes, sir. Guess I'll be happy to the end of my days. Oh, that money's gonna be nothing but trouble to you, boy. Well, that ain't right, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, we all work hard to get money, don't we? Some of us do. Now go over and get me those biscuits and hurry up. Yes, sir. What you need, Mush? A pan of biscuits. Oh, don't bother yourself. I'll get them for you, buddy. He told me. In a pig's eye, he I'll did. get him. I'll do it for Who you. Who asked for your help? He was talking to me. How'd you like a mouthful of knuckle bone for supper? Bring it up! <laughs> Bring it up, I said! <laughs> uh, if that don't cool you off, I got another bucket, Will. You heard any, Mr. Quint? Oh, but they're gonna be. Now, look at this mess. Pick up those biscuits. I'm sorry, Mr. Wishbone. No, don't pick them up. I gotta make a new batch. 
Well, what are you all just standing around for? Clear out of here. There ain't gonna be any supper for an hour. Oh. You and your money. There's only an accident, Mr. Wishbone. They didn't do it on purpose. Well, money's supposed to be good, ain't it? Ain't supposed to? Supposed to be good. in the middle and the water's rising fast. I think it'll help anything. Yeah, well, we can't split the herd on both sides of the river. Just keep moving. Well, you're not singing this morning. Money got you worried? Maybe. One of the big troubles with having money, all that worry. Well, I never worried about it before. You never had it to worry about before. I never look at it that way. Got any plans for when you get to Denver? Buy yourself a new suit, things like that? I don't know exactly. I'll do something. Something? You'd think a man with $1,500 in his kick would have some better idea what to do with it than something. Yes, sir. Hey, Wish, you better put keels on them wagons. You fixin' to take them across. That's real considerate of you to ride all the way back here just to tell me that. Now, what is it you really want? Well, nothing special. Just thought uh, maybe Mushy would let us take a gander at all that money in the daylight. How'd you like a gander at a long-handled meat chopper? Oh, don't get so huffy, Wish. How about it, Mushy? You'd like to show it to us? I can. I got it hit away. Well, I hope you hit it real good so the rats don't get to it. Well, at least they identified themselves. Now get out of here and leave him alone. Well, all right with me if he don't care what happened. But wait a minute, Mr. Quince. What about them rents? Well, they just like to chaw on money and make nests out of it and things like that. They do? I even heard of fellas having money run by water and mold. Ain't you toothless? Crumples up just like cornbread. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, uh, you could put it in the bank. And you just happen to have one in your hip pocket? Nope, wouldn't recommend a bank. Too risky. They're always getting robbed. Doggone, I never thought of that. Oh, I'll bet. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Well, Mushy, the only thing I know to do with money is to go into town and have one wild, hairy wingding. Well, I never did that before. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go in town and show you how. No, no, Toothless is just funnin' with you, Mushy. Now, the proper thing to do with that money is to invest it in a good, sound proposition. Well, what's a proposition? It's how to get your pockets picked while you're watching. Mushy, when are you gonna wake up? Well, I'm awake, Mr. Wishbone. Well, they're just trying to be helpful, that's all. Helpful? Now, I'm gonna give you one second to clear out of here before I pound you into those saddles. Now, wait a minute. It was only an idea. Get! Get out of here! And you. Get that thing packed and get that wagon out of here. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs>
Let's get that wagon moving. Well, come on. Let's get some ropes on that wagon. I'll get it. Say nothing to me, Mr. Wishbone? I wouldn't mind even if you said something mean. You just wait till Mr. Favor gets back. He'll say something mean to you. Hey, Mr. Roddy? Mr. Favor? How'd it go? They finally picked up four more, two miles downstream off of a sandbar. Two of them were so stove in that we had to shoot them. Well, that's 12 we lost. Yeah. And I'm afraid I can't save much of the supplies. That figures. Well, we'll just have to make do we at the next town. And the wagon's pretty beat up. Well, at least that ain't gonna be no problem. Now that Mushy's tucked away nice and safe, we'll have plenty of time to fix the wagon, won't we, Scarlet? Like all night, huh, Quince? Yes, sir. All night. Mr. Favor, seeing how the wagon got busted and the supplies all got spoiled, and them cows dead, and... And you being sore now, I'll be glad to pay for everything. Mushy, let's get this straight. You put that money away and you keep it out of my sight. We've had nothing but trouble because of that money. We ain't gonna have no more trouble. You got that straight? Huh? You better get that straight. You better start looking for another job. I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. It's night, isn't it? I guess so. Well, why aren't you sleeping? 
can't sleep, Mr. Wishbone. I keep seeing Mr. Favorite. I sure am sorry. Yeah, drink that. I ain't thirsty. Go on, and drink it. Make you feel better. I don't think anything's gonna make me feel better. Not as long as I got all that. Mushy, I guess it's time you learned the facts of life. Facts? Extra money don't mean extra things. It just means extra responsibility. What responsibility? I ever tell you the story of the rich man and the poor man? Well, sir, the rich man and the poor man died and got up to the pearly gates at the same time. But old St. Peter, he let the rich man in first. And there was a big party. Angels and music and singing. And, well, finally St. Peter remembered that poor man back the gates and went and let him in. Only by this time, the party was all over. And the poor man says, well, why don't you throw me a party? And St. Peter says, well, a poor man like you comes in here every day. A rich man don't make it very often. That's what I mean about money, Mushy. It means it makes life an awful lot harder for those that's got it. it means they gotta take the responsibility for it. And if you don't, that's when the trouble starts. Just like yesterday. You understand? I think so. So, you just remember and not put your trust in money. Put your money in trust and everything will be all right. You drink that coffee and get on to bed. It's gonna be the sun up before you know it. Sure will, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Wishbone. Thank you. She's run off. Well, I'm sorry I did not do very good. I am going to see Miss Lori Lai, Laura Lai. So you will not have to put up on me no more for a while. Maybe, I think. Fare thee well, Harkness Mushroom. Be on account of what you said to him last night. Only had that coming. Oh, well, then that makes two of us. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Yeah. Well, there's not much we can do about it now. No, uh, you know, everything that happened yesterday, that, that wasn't all his fault. It could have happened to anybody. Maybe. Yeah, that female scavenger will pick him clean by noon. You know, it's... Really gonna be a shame no one's there to kind of look out for his interest. All right, all right. You two bleeding hard skid off my back. You can go after him, but make sure you get that money in the bank before you bring him back. Yeah. Right. Fare thee well. I'll bet 50. I'm in. I 
two hundred. I raise you all I got. Oh, we're too late. And he's buried on a pile of junk. That gambling fool didn't even look at his whole card. Acts like he's trying to give it away. Yeah, you know she's got the other jack. Mushy, you blind idiot. Mr. Wishbone, Mr. Rowdy. Well, I'm... I'll be through here in a minute. That's pretty big braze. You've caught me a little short on cash. Oh, good. Well, get your money. It's been nice seeing you again, Lorelai. Take your hands off the table when you're not playing. Joe, give me a pen. Here you are. I'm calling your raise. Hmm. Half the trailblazer to cover it. Now, let's see what you're so proud of. Wait a minute, Deuces Wild? That's right. Oh, that's five aces. You can't beat it. Oh, my goodness, I did it again. Oh, get him out of here. Get the money. I'll get my money. Come on. Wait a minute, cowboy. The game isn't over. As far as we're concerned, it is, Lorelei, unless you want to play with matches. It'll take me a couple of days to raise some more cash. Well, I'll tell you something. We'll talk about it on our way back from the back. Fair enough, but uh, how about a drink to celebrate first? No, no thanks. Everybody, drinks on the house. Wait a minute now. Don't you, uh, don't you consult your partner before you give away the profits? You keep pushing, cowboy, and we'll both forget I'm a lady. <laughs> well, how about it, partner? Wouldn't you care for a little drink? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to have a sarsaparilla. Well, step right up to the bar. Thank you. Joe? Yes, ma'am. Give them all they want. Beer? Beer. Hi, well, Lorelei. You're all heart. I even give Christmas baskets to trail bums. You got yourself in a fix, Lorelei. Oh, I'll get out of it. There are the games besides poker. All I need is a little time. Walt, we've always been good friends, haven't we? Not good enough, but I can't win them all either. That depends. On what? Those two cowboys who broke it up? It would help if they were out of the way for a little while. Say, a um, couple of hours. There's nothing I can do, Lorelei. You could put them in jail. They ain't broken any laws. Well, think real hard. They must have tracked dirt on the boardwalk or uh, frowned at the mayor. Nah. No, Lorelei, I can't do it. Well, I uh, guess I'll just have to call in some IOUs to make up for the losses. You know I can't pay them. I know that, Walt. And there's nothing I'd like better than to help you, but what can I do? All right. I'll think of something. Come on, let's go. Let's go to the bank, Marshal. I don't want to go. Well, you stop acting foolish and do like you're told. But that money caused all this trouble. I want to get rid of it. Yeah, well, that's why there's no better place for it than the bank. They don't get rid of it. Sure it does. You put it in the bank, and it's just like you don't have it anymore. Then one of these days, when you're old like Wish here, you got something to fall back on. Any more smart out of you, I'm gonna fall all over you. Now, come on, behave yourself. Hold on, partner. We have things to talk about. Let's go into the office. Wait just a minute now. He's afraid of the dark. Let go of him, you Jezebel. Marshal? What's the trouble? Well, my partner and I were just going into the office for a private business talk when these two gentlemen tried to interfere. Well, uh, that's your money, mister? So what if it isn't? Uh, I believe you'll find it belongs to my partner here, Marshal. 
Then give it to him. Oh, good riddance. Well, he just hold it for me, Marshal. That'll be up to the judge to decide when circuit court convenes, day after tomorrow. What? You're under arrest, both of you. Now, wait just a minute. What charge? Attempted theft. Any more talk, I may think of something else. <laughs> Let's go. I told you we should have got rid of it. Let's go. Certainly happy that you were only joking about arresting Mr. Rowdy and Mr. Wishman. Oh, yes. The marshal said they laughed about it all the way back to camp. Well, I had to do something so us businessmen could have a private talk now, didn't I? Well, I didn't want my friends to get in any trouble on account of that money. Well, don't worry, Mushy. You put it in the safe with your own hands, remember? Well, all the same, maybe I should have put it in the bank like they said. And now it'll be just as safe in the office. I'll keep it for you, and I won't even look at it. That's awful nice of you, ma'am. You're welcome to look at it, though, anytime you want to. Thanks, I'll do that. Uh, well, Mushy, let's have one final drink to celebrate our partnership. Excuse me. Then you can be on your way, since we both agreed that I'm going to run the business. Oh, uh, just while you're away driving cattle, of course. Uh, Joe, uh, give my partner a drink. The best. You bet. What'll it be, sir? You call me, sir? Oh, boy, that's right, sir. You are the boss. Well, I have a double sarsaparilla. Coming right up, sir. How does it feel being a partner, Mushy? Real good. Yes, ma'am. Now, that's the way I like to see a big man handle himself. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but I've been thinking. If I'm an important businessman and all, maybe I ought to get some of them fancy clothes. New suit, maybe, uh, with a stiff collar and, and maybe a hard hat. Well, uh, that would take money. Well, you wouldn't mind opening a strong box for me, would you? Oh, no need to bother, Mushy. I can give you an advance right out of the cash drawer. Joe, give Mr. Musgrove $50. $50? You heard me. Now, Mushy, let's go right over here, sit down, and make ourselves comfortable. Yes, ma'am. There you are. Uh, Joe, uh, bring over some of that free lunch, a lot of it. You could eat a little something before you go back to camp, couldn't you, Mushy? Yes, ma'am. Hey, girls, uh, come over here and meet your new boss. They've just been dying to get better acquainted. Well, now, isn't he just the nicest? I'll say he is. Who ever heard of a handsome boss? <laughs> you just eat, drink, and be merry, baby, because tomorrow's a long way off. Here comes the oh, lunch. Look right out, girl. Here. Ellie, watch yourself. Here we are. There you are, Mr. Musgrove. And uh, here's Ken. Thirty, fifty dollars. We wouldn't want you to think we don't take good care of the boss, Mushy. I guess I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> Why don't you eat something, honey? <laughs> I'll bet she's got him plucked cleaner than a boiled chicken by now. Well, I ain't worried about him. It's us I'm worried about. Well, we did say one thing out of the deal. Look at that. Hey, that's the deed she signed. Yeah. How'd you get this? Well, I asked for it, of course. Hey. Didn't by any chance light finger anything else, did you? Like uh, enough money to bail us out of this trap? Nah. Well, I did lift this watch off of him. I'll give it to him for his birthday. Wasn't gonna let her steal it, too. Yes, well, now we can just count the hours till this trial begins. All right, you boys can be on your way. How come? Let's say I'm campaigning for votes. Gun belts are on the rack in the office. Well, where's Mushy? Your wealthy friend. Last time I saw him, he was cutting a wide swath through Tate's clothing store. Come on, maybe it isn't too late. Thanks for the hospitality, Marshal. Got the friendliest bed bugs I've ever seen. Yeah, 
whole town brims with friendship, don't it? Of course, that could change any minute. Was I you, I'd leave right now. All three of you. doing here? Looking for you, you dandified jackass. Well, Miss Lorelei said you went back to camp. Never mind that. You got any money left? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Rowdy. About a dollar and 40 cents. Oh, I don't feel so good. I'd better... What'd she do, poison you? Oh, no, sir. Must have been that last turkey leg I had. It couldn't have been the ham and the roast beef. Or them pickles. They wouldn't upset me none particularly. I can't go in no more. Well, I'm surprised you got this far. What happened to the rest of the money? Well, I bought everything I wanted. And a lot of things I never even heard of. And I spent the money so fast, it came up $48.60. And the rest of the money's in Miss Lorelei's strong box. Oh. She promised to save it for me. Oh, well, then that finishes that. <laughs> Be too sure, Wish. Don't forget we got this here paper. Oh, well, it's probably worthless. Yeah. Well, when I get through with that female road agent, she's gonna wish it was. Step right in and enjoy some real Texas hospitality. Free drinks on the inside. to work, girls. Just getting to know the help. You can cry about it on the way out, cowboy. Oh, afraid I won't be going, Lorelei. See this here deed that you signed over to Mushy? Well, the... That's right, it's the deed to this place. Got your signature on it. Now, you see, Mushy, he, uh, he thought the pace was getting a little too fast. So he signed it over to me. Hey, gee, that... Makes me half owner of the trailblazer now, doesn't it? And I suppose those free drinks outside are an example of how you expect the place to be run? Oh, no, no. You see, it's Bigfoot Wallace Day. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot Wallace, he was a Texas hero, and being a loyal Texan, you see, I've got to honor it. Well, all right. You've had your fun. I'm turning off the celebration. Hold on, partner. I recall reading somewhere that the decision of one partner is binding to the other, right? What about it? Well, I gave the order to keep those drinks flowing till we we're all out. Now, you weren't around when that decision was handed down, so you just kind of got to go along with it. Come in. Yates? Yeah, come right in. Which walls do you want knocked out? Oh, well, you see, it's this one here. I thought we'd maybe knock it out and stick it back about 30 feet. Oh, well, that would be easy. We'll just stick it. Get out of here! Partner, I don't understand. I'm just trying to help out around here. I thought we'd push this wall back, make a real high-class gaming room out of it. Put in some roulette wheels and one of those chuckle-luck faro outfits. That like. Do you have any idea how much that can cost? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. 
I figure around the neighborhood of fifteen hundred dollars. Fine, just fine. Well, yeah, the wages of gluttony take a heavy toll. Have you considered turpentine and sugar? Oh, oh, oh quit moaning, mushy. You really think so, Reverend? The uh, turpentine and sugar? No doubt about it. Well, I've seen horses with a sprung fetlock get a dose of that stuff. Come up kicking on all fours. What'd I tell you? You ought to pay more attention to me. Oh, I'm going to from now on, Mr. Wishbone. I promise. You sure you ain't gonna stay mad at me? Of course not. What have I got to be mad at you for? Well, the money. It's an awful thing, ain't it? Amen, brother. Well, it isn't that bad. Well, you and Mr. Rowdy taking care of me and looking after me like this when I'm in trouble. I let him put you in jail. Dreadful sin when a man finds enough meanness in him to turn from his friends. Well, it wasn't really his meanness, you see. It was that woman. Well, no, the money changed everything, Mr. Wishbone. All them things I bought, I never enjoyed one of them. Why, I should have given the money to the Reverend for the new church. Oh, see, will you quit running off at the mouth? The Lord loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> but you can see he isn't really that cheerful. Yes, I am, Mr. Wishbone. Well, just knowing that that money ain't around anymore, I'm beginning to be awful cheerful. Oh, here you are, Mushy. I got the money back for you. Laurel, I just bought out your share. <laughs> oh, no! No? Glory be! Will you take a reverend for the new church? Please. What? After all the trouble I went to get it back? But ain't it right to do something for the Lord, Mr. Rowdy? He does a lot for us. I'm answering you, heathen. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I appreciate all you've done for me, saving all the money and everything. But I ain't none too smart to know what to do with it. Besides, uh, well, I got my friends and a job and, and a new suit. And there ain't nothing else I need in the whole world. The Lord dealt you a pat hand, didn't he, son? Well, yes, sir. I guess he did. And now you're giving it back to him. Thank you, son. And thank you, too, brothers, for sharing your friend's blessed moment of charity. Oh, well, we was glad to do it. Well, the first thing I'm going to buy with this is a big supply of shovels. Have to dig a good deep hole for the foundation. Oh, and you're all welcome to join me. Shovels? Digging? Good and deep. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Reverend. No, but we got to get back to the herd. Yeah, you see, I got to make supper for the herd. I mean, the men, the drovers, uh, maybe later. Well, I wouldn't mind digging a little. Then you can dig a hole and bury that suit in it. Now, come on, get out of here. Bye. A man really doesn't have to dig to show the goodness in his heart, does he? Mushy there. He couldn't have given away all that money, could he? He not only could, he did. Now, that means you parasites are gonna have to find yourself a new proposition. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, we've still got time for a little penny ante. Sure is good to be back, Mr. Wishbone. You're not gonna be back very long. You don't get out of that suit. Wishbone, you know I won't have to wait too long at the pearly gates. Mushy, I said get out of that suit. Sure thing. Sure is good to be back, Mr. Quince. Mr. Scarlet? Yeah. Playing poker? Some call it that. Could I sit in? I thought you said you gave all that money away. I didn't give it all away. I got a dollar left. Well, that's better than nothing. Here, you can deal. You 
know I played seven card stack? I've heard it mentioned a couple times. Deuce is what? You're dealing. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three. Rowdy. Hit him up, hit him up, move him on, move him on, hit him up, raw high. 